And joining us now here in the studio, Dan Stein, Executive Director of the Federation for American Immigration Reform, and Ben Johnson. He's with the American Immigration Council. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you very much for coming in. We appreciate your time, especially since we have the time here to really discuss this <coughs> issue in depth. Mr. Stein, I guess I'd like to start with you. What's your expectation for how this new law in Arizona will work as a practical matter? Well, the politics of the issue, of course, are one thing, and that's extremely disappointing. It's disappointing to see that we're not getting support from Secretary Napolitano and the President uh, for the people of Arizona who would like to have assistance from the federal government in enforcing immigration law and in implementing this new law in Arizona. The Arizona law, which we had a hand in drafting, we feel is not only constitutional, but it's entirely consistent with the whole federal immigration regulatory scheme. Uh, it, it tries to supplement federal immigration law in a way that makes it easier to develop a state-federal partnership in enforcing immigration law. I mean, one of the reasons why illegal immigration has been out of control for so many years has been the fact that there's been this wall that was set up between the states and the federal government that's allowed people, once they get into the country, to remain here illegally indefinitely. This law is a good, common-sense solution. It does not, absolutely does not create any potential for racial profiling. That is a big, fat canard. Well, we're extremely disappointed with the I, president I, I, I'm certain made we're those comments. I'm, I'm certain we're going to discuss that concern in, in great detail here on the show. My question, though, for you was and remains, and then we'll bring in Mr. Johnson, how is this going to work in terms of day-to-day -day law enforcement, day-to-day well, -day people <clears throat> going about their business? How <clears throat> will this change life in Arizona? The, the, way, the way the law is designed to work is to better integrate, and along with some other laws in, in Arizona, better integrate police operations, law enforcement operations with federal immigration law. So let's say in the course of a routine constitutional lawful contact, like a traffic stop, if somebody presents a phony ID, then the law requires that, that, that police officer to verify with ICE whether or not the person is illegally in the country. Okay, if you present a valid driver's license, then there's a presumption you're here legally. So it's, this is not about stopping people on the street randomly for no reason to see if you've got your papers. That is, a, there, there are a lot of people in this country who want to create this kind of misinformation. This is simply about integrating local law enforcement operations so that we can better enforce immigration right. law at the federal level. So when local police say to ICE at the federal level, hey, we've got people here, we think they're illegally here, ICE can then come verify that, take them into to, to proceedings Let me bring deportation. In, let me bring in Otherwise, you're never going to get control of the problem. Let me bring in Mr. Johnson. What concerns do you have about this law as it's written? Well, Dan's glossed over some really, really troubling parts of this law, not the least of which is that this does require police to stop, on the first hand, people who they reasonably suspect are in the United States in an undocumented sense. So this goes way beyond other stops that then allow them to question people about immigration status. This is about stopping them in the first place based on a reasonable suspicion uh, of whether they're in the United States legally or not. And then it empowers people, the average citizens, to sue the police if they believe the police isn't, isn't doing their job. So you've got the police stuck between two incredibly difficult uh, rocks. Uh, the, the governor, interestingly enough, can't answer the basic question of what does an undocumented immigrant look like? And to answer this question of how the police will go about determining reasonable suspicion for immigration, violation of immigration status, you have to be able to answer that question. So it, all of that means that this is added much more controversy, much more symbolism, much more rhetoric to a debate that needs a lot less of that and a lot more hard work on fixing the system, not just enforcement policies, though they need to be fixed, but all aspects of our immigration system. Do you think it, that this new law in Arizona is on its face unconstitutional? I, I do. I think on its face it's unconstitutional because of a violation of the preemption, uh, intruding into an area of, uh, of law that is uh, dominated by and preempted by federal law. And I think that there's no doubt that it's in its impl implementation it will certainly have unconstitutional civil rights violations. You're shaking your head. Well, there's clearly <clears throat> what we have been doing at FAIR is exploring the sphere for lawful state action to assist and complement the federal government in immigration enforcement. And this law was carefully drafted based on judicial precedents and a lot of authority that say that, that suggests that ultimately this kind of law is both constitutional and necessary. Now, every provision of this law, there are other provisions of the law dealing with E-Verify and employment and work site, uh, work site enforcement, day labor sites with um, smuggling uh, 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 and a variety of criminal law violations. And, and at the end of the law, it ultimately says when any judge is interpreting it, 
anything inconsistent with federal law, federal law rules. So there's no supremacy clause issue at all. Nor this argument that a police officer has authority to stop somebody solely because they think they look like they're an illegal alien because they're driving by. Oh, that guy looks like there's no such law authority under this law. <laughs> it says in the course of a lawful stop, which is governed by the Fourth Amendment search and seizure clause, if in the course of verifying investigation, evident reasonable suspicion that they're in the country illegally. Let's say a van pull of, of you know, seven or eight people in a van well, speeding. All, the, a, a all living. the situations are not going to be that clear cut. I mean, exactly. we, we well, can well, grant, well, we can police, grant the van. The, the police officers don't have any incentive to go around going, oh, hey, I'm going to see if you're here illegally. Uh, that's right. an absurd well, interpretation. I know and that's what, that's what the president said. And that's divisive and inflammatory and misrepresents what's, what people are trying to do in this country is protect their communities. Violent crime, homicides let are me, up in Phoenix. Let me jump in for one second. I know Mr. Johnson wants to respond and I will give you the chance, but this is the perfect opportunity for us to add one more voice to the mix. Joining us now by phone is former Sacramento Police Chief Arturo Venegas. He's with the Law Enforcement Engagement Initiative. Uh, Chief Venegas, thanks very much for your time today. Thanks for being with us. What are your thoughts uh, coming from a law enforcement perspective about how this new law, this crackdown plays out in the real world? Well, first of all, thank you very much for having uh, this conversation. I, I think it's very important to recognize that the chiefs uh, of police in Arizona initially recommended to the governor to uh, veto the bill. They felt it was very intrusive on their prioritizing how policing occurred in their community. Uh, nowhere in any statute throughout the country is a citizen empowered to actually sue an entity of the agency of municipality if they believe that that agency is not doing enough of a certain caliber of work. Uh, we are in, empowered uh, as the, the government arm to deprive people of their uh, freedom uh, up to and including their life. And then it's second-guessed by the court. And the reality is, is that we believe that most of the officers are going to try to do the right thing. However, if a citizen of the office is doing the right thing, disagrees with that right thing, and they are empowered by this statute to bring a lawsuit that municipality that off that is supposed to be ludicrous. The other part for us as police chiefs is that we understand the necessity of having everybody participate in good citizenship and reporting crime. We need victims that board. Chief Anagas, our connection isn't the best, so uh, I'm going to ask you to stay put for a second. I'm going to see if we can reestablish perhaps a better connection because I do want to hear everything that you are saying. So I'm going to have the crew work on that. Uh, can you comment? Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Johnson, I owe, I owe you a chance to get back in. Jump yeah, in. well, listen, what Mr. Venegas is talking about is that the chiefs of police in Arizona have said that this was a bad idea. They wanted the governor to veto it. The county prosecutors in the 15 counties uh, in Arizona, their association said that they were opposed to this law. Law enforcement folks have spoken up on this. Is this is a federal issue. Again, that doesn't mean that we don't have problems that we have to solve. It's just that, again, we don't need more symbolic gestures. This is going to have a huge economic price on Arizona as well at a time when it mm -hmm. does not need it. Uh, you're not going to be able, you cannot easily identify who is documented and who's not. 30% of the population in Arizona is, uh, is, is, is Latino. And we're, obviously an, and we're obviously a nation of immigrants. So in every part absolutely. of the country, there are people from other places. I got to take a break in 30 seconds. Respond, if you would, to Ms. To briefly to what Mr. Johnson I mean, look, just said. I'll, look, ultimately, I think uh, that their police departments are divided on this issue. But in the end, uh, the standing clause is in the provision because American citizens have not found a way to get the government to enforce immigration law. And they are standing helpless while the borders are breached by millions and millions of people without any way to get any kind of relief. So obviously, you know, some people working for the government don't want to have more work to do, but we think this is the right way to go. Talking with Ben Johnson of the American Immigration Council, Dan Stein of the American Federation for Immigration Reform, and Art Venegas of the Law Enforcement Engagement Initiative. We'll take a break. We'll come back with more right after this.